Well, welcome to the Jacob Kersey program. I am Jacob Kersey. Thank you for listening at Real Jacob Kersey on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram if you care to connect via social media. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you'd like to hear any topics discussed on the podcast, you can email us, realjacobkersey at gmail.com. That's real, my name. It should be on the screen if you're listening, at gmail.com. Um, and all that will be in the show notes. I'm excited to have a Mr. Jared Eckert on the show. And uh, Jared is a research assistant for the DeVos Center at the Heritage Foundation. And uh, for this episode, we're going to be chatting a little bit about the so-called Equality Act. It's called the Equality Act, but as you'll you'll learn over the course of this episode, um, it provides protections for some while destroying protections for everyone else. So there's a lot to get into, but first, I just want to allow Jared to introduce himself more. Hey, Jared, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So there's all kind of things going up in, in, in Washington, Washington right now, and I'm sure just with the daily news cycle, people can kind of get lost in what's being talked about and what's really going on up in D.C., Um but there is something that has been really grabbing my attention, and it's this very disturbing Equality Act. And so could you please tell my audience more about the Equality Act? What is it, and where did it come from? Yeah, so, you know, Americans should never have to live in fear of being penalized, you know, for their most deeply held beliefs. Uh, but the problem with the Equality Act is that it would actually force every American to agree with a government-imposed ideology um, or really be treated as an outlaw. Um, the Equality Act gives the government power to dictate what we can think and say and do uh, regarding gender and sex. And this is really just a, a gross violation of our most basic constitutional freedoms. Um, what, what we see is that you know, while the Constitution protects every citizen's freedom of speech and free exercise of religion, even when that leads to disagreement, uh, you know, the radical progressives uh, who drafted, who created the Equality Act, um, what it will actually do is it will turn disagreement over biological sex and marriage into legal discrimination. So it basically penalizes citizens for having... Um a different viewpoint on sexual orientation and gender identity, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And, and in what ways does it do that? How does it penalize yeah. people? Yeah, so, well, first and foremost, it, um, it demolishes existing civil rights and constitutional freedoms uh, by eliminating conscience protections and religious exemptions from existing civil rights laws. So this means, you know, we're talking everyone from educators, med medical professionals, religious organizations. Um, religious exemptions have been eradicated uh, from um, the Equality Act. They, they have been stated not to apply uh, in the rewrite of, of the Civil Rights Act from 1964 that the Equality Act is doing. So this means, you know, just as some, for some examples, that uh, in the medical profession, affirmative sex change interventions through puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, sex change surgeries, that will become standard care because doctors won't be allowed to refuse people uh, for, for those services <clears throat> without, it, without being liable to discrimination. Um, it also means that churches um, or other religious organizations that run women's shelters would be forced to take in biological males because it's a public-facing uh, operation. Um, it also means that schools will have to teach transgender ideology um, and eliminate single sex spaces, uh, basically for, for uh, receiving any small amount of federal funding. So this this will touch everything. Yeah, and I was looking at some of the things that um, the left has been saying about the Equality Act, and I read one comment where someone said the Equality Act just reminds them how much they hate religious people. <laughs> But the the thing is, this is not just a religious issue. You you can look at science and come to the conclusion that there are only two genders, male and female. Right. And so it's punishing people who might not be religious at all, who right. just believe that there's not there's male and female. Right. Exactly. And and that's I think that's you know one of the saddest parts about this is that actually the science based treatments uh, for especially helping children, um, 
you know, grapple with uh, gender dysphoria, um, a lot of them, you know, would actually be outlawed. The science-based, evidence-based treatments. Um, what what we what we do know is that 80 to 95 percent of children who struggle with gender dysphoria, um, who struggle with with issues of gender identity, actually reconcile with their biological sex hmm. if they're allowed to go through puberty. So, um, and those who under un, those who undergo transition um, operations, whether that's, again, anything from puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, um, or sex chain surgeries, uh, they don't see any lasting benefits to mental health by undergoing those processes, those, those operations. So, um, and it can even lead to uh, taking some of those, those chemical uh, puberty blockers and, and cross-sex hormones can actually lead to a lot of physical health issues like cardiovascular disease, uh, loss of bone density, and I mean, and that's just besides permanent sterilization. So, wow. yeah, it would it it doesn't just impact the religious; it impacts anyone who wants to just follow the real science on this. Yeah, and anyone who wants to live a happy and healthy life. I mean, these are kids yeah. we're talking about. What 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 age? I mean, we say children, but what what age are we talking about here? Yeah. So, well, if the Equality Gets Act get Equality Act gets passed, um. You know, we could see children as young as kindergarten being uh, taught uh, basically the, the sexual orientation and gender identity ideology of the left um, as, as young as that age. And it basically would it would eliminate, like I've already mentioned, doctors from turning away minors from seeking this care uh, because they would be liable to discrimination if they I mean, it, not only if they turn away, but even if they were to recommend that uh individual looking elsewhere so um but even as, aside from that like you've already mentioned with the science-based things like we're we're actually eliminating real science-based uh treatment you know for children who are who are genuinely struggling with this and and you know just to funnel them into one uh just funneling them into sex changes or or ho hormone therapy or puberty blockers uh is just going to be detrimental to their health Wow. So young children, um, if they, if you have a young kid who thinks that, oh, you know, they're born a biological male, they say, oh, I'm, I'm a girl. And if they want to have uh, basically surgical changes done, a doctor can't, you know, refuse or can't recommend them to go elsewhere else. So, you know, be liable to discrimination. Right. Yeah. yeah that's sad. And, and, and the, yeah. the care, I, I hear a lot of people talking about um, you know, we want to care for these children who are, you know, experiencing, um, you know, being born in the wrong body is, is how the left would put it. Uh, mm -hmm. They were they're a girl who was just accidentally born in a boy's body. Well, the care that they talk about, my understanding is they immediately start with basically surgical and chemical destruction of the child's genitalia. That's the starting yeah. point, and they move backwards from there. And if a doctor says, you know. Hey, maybe maybe we should rethink this. Maybe we should let the child grow a little bit. He could be subject. He or she could be subject to you know um, punishment for discrimination. That that is terrible, absolutely yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah. I think and it, yeah, and I, it's it's the saddest part about the Equality Act is that it it doesn't just hurt right um, medical doctors. It doesn't just hurt uh, parents and children. Um, it actually hurts those who are struggling with their gender identity, it, it actually hurts those it's, it's proposed to help the most um, by eliminating real science-based opportunity, like treatments and opportunities for them to actually heal from this really tragic and, and heartbreaking condition. So um, yeah, that's just, it, it's, it's so, it's so sad. And the number you gave earlier were uh, most of these children who go through this, you said 80 to 95% actually get over it. Yeah. And yet the mm -hmm. starting point for the left is, oh, let's go ahead and let them have um, permanently damaging surgery. That, that's terrible. But not only does yeah. the Equality Act target children, um, it also opens women's locker rooms to biological males. Now, we've already seen some issues with that on the state level, but if it takes federal, we could be seeing this everywhere. Um, can you speak more to that? Yeah. Um, so – the Equality Act would erase important protections for women and girls, um, really by by forcing female-only sports programs to let biological males compete on girls' and women's teams, as well as letting 
biological males into uh, female only spaces. And this, this eliminates safety, uh, but also opportunity and ultimately equality for women. Uh, we've seen this, uh, like you've mentioned at the state level, specifically in Connecticut, there are a number of uh, young female athletes who um, are in a court case against um, the Connecticut Association of Schools um, for allowing two biological males uh, to compete on on the track team. They have the two alone have won, I think, 15 state you know championship titles, uh, and they wouldn't have even qualified on the men's team. Uh, it's something there's you know it's something insane like. I think Allison Felix, who is the world's fastest female uh, sprinter, could be beaten by 30 or sorry, not 30, 300 uh, high school boys. Her, her world record as the fastest female sprinter could be beaten by 300 high school boys from the U.S. alone. So, you know, if you want to talk about I mean, we're not just talking about, um, you know, just high school competitions. We're talking scholarship opportunities. We're talking career opportunities. I mean, yeah. Um, so it, it will really hurt women. Right. And I think the most sickening thing about all of this is the fact that that there is a political party in the U.S. that has the audacity to tell women that they are not valuable and that they are not equal unless they can do everything a man can do. And that's just sad to tell them that being a woman, it just, just makes them less valuable. And, and it's really so sad because – you know, you, you mentioned the numbers there that what, what men are physically capable, what those boys are physically capable of doing meets the records of those women. It doesn't make them any less valuable. And to sit here and try to yeah. tell women that because they're not, they don't meet some of the physical standards that some of the men do in their sports, that they're, that, that they're not valuable, that they're, they're somehow less. It, it's really yeah. sickening. Um, and that is, that is a cultural conversation that, that we've, been having for years and we finally see you know the effects of that starting to take over um and for and honestly forcing women to give up their protections um and and basically telling women they have to be like men to be valuable it's, it's really sad um we also see employers would be forced to provide medical insurance for gender transition I saw that in doing some research. Now, what what type of employers are we talking about? Yeah, um, well, so because uh, the Equality Act makes a lot of really critical changes to the 1964 Civil Rights Act, um, it's it it broadens basically anyone who that applies to. Um, so it could be uh, it could be religious, basically organizations with. Um, public facing nonprofit. So as I kind of already mentioned, um, you know, if it's a uh, women's shelter or if it's a food pantry, then churches may be pressured uh, from federal law because they would be considered a public accommodation um, under the rewrite of the of the Civil Rights Act um, that would take place by the Equality Act. Basically, they would be considered public accommodations and they couldn't discriminate against uh, transgender individuals. And so they may be forced either to adopt bathroom policies or to hire certain individuals. So um, it, it really, yeah, there it's, it's further reaching um, under the Equality Act than it's ever been. And so um, it, 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 because, and additionally, because the Equality Act eliminates, uh, again, conscience protections and religious exemptions, um, you know, it, it basically leaves so many things open um, to being forced to really to accept this gender ideology and to have to hire and um, yeah uh, people who may disagree with their religious mission or organization's mission. Mm -hmm. You know, now the way the the Equality Act is is being marketed, um, I was watching this NBC News um, clip about it, and basically it was saying that it would provide protection for LGBTQ people. From being, um, you know, from being fired from their job, or from not being able to buy an apartment, or so on and so forth, things like that. I um, mean, so the way a lot of people see the, or the way a lot of people are being sold the Equality Act is, oh well, you know, it keeps LGBTQ people from being discriminated against in the job market, or from getting a house or a place to stay, or so on and so forth. And so, 
it's being marketed that way, but all these things we're talking about weren't even are not even mentioned in that news clip. So um, how, how are we how are we going to win the war with this this marketing? Because you have the left marketing it one way, and they're sneaking in things like you know putting child's life in dangers and and removing women's protection and forcing church organizations to conform to this leftist a viewpoint on sexual orientation and gender identity. So how do we win the war with, with marketing? Yeah, well, I think first off, you know, we need to recognize, we need to affirm every person should be treated with dignity and respect and no one should face unjust discrimination ever. Um, but what we also need to see is that the Equality Act, uh, what it actually is, is it's a Trojan horse for a radical progressive uh, ideology to be imposed upon our nation top to bottom. So it's, it's you know, it really is about imposing a sort of, it, about making a, a certain ideology about gender and sex to be the new orthodoxy of our day. Um, and so it will be weaponized against anyone who doesn't agree with that. And that's, um, and that's really what I think uh, we see from the left, from the radical left on this. Um, they're going to stop at nothing until their misguided ideology becomes the law of the land. Yeah. Well, they're already using children um, as political tools to to advance their agenda, and, and so it, it's not surprising to me that you know this is this has reached um, the house. It passed the house. So for my audience, um, it passed the house, and now it's supposed to go to the Senate. So what are the chances, Jared, that it, that it actually passes in the Senate? So right now, we uh, it would still require the 60-vote uh, um, uh, filibuster, legislative filibusters, in order to uh, pass. Um, and we are not confident that it has 60 votes. Um, but it doesn't mean that uh, the Senate Democrats won't try to find other ways to pass it. Um, as you've seen, there's a lot uh, more bustle right now about what alternatives there may be to um, eliminating the legislative filibuster um, for those who are who are opposed to it, like um, cinema and uh, mansion. So, yeah, I think I mean, there's no knowing for sure, but um, we're not. Uh, yeah, we're we're. We're not confident it can get to 60 votes, um, but there are also other compromise solutions which would just as well um, write this gender ideology into civil rights law. And and what we want to make clear is that even with religious exemptions uh, in those in these certain compromise solutions, um, when when we make gender identity and the less gender ideology, when we when we cement that into civil rights law. Uh, we're going to have the same exact problems. And like you said, it's not uh, its not just how it harms religious people. It's how it harms all people, children, right. girls. Like it's, this is not going to leave anyone untouched. So we have to be really careful about, um, you know, and, and watchful about what compromises are being introduced um, into the House and the Senate that may try to find a middle way. It's it's really sad that you know they're sexualizing our children and that they're telling women that they can't they can't be valuable unless they can do what men can do and vice versa. It, it's really sad that it's reached this point. Um, yeah. I'm and, and is is my understanding correct that it's supposed to be voted on later this month? Yes. Yeah, so tomorrow uh, it actually has a hearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee, okay. and um, then we're not sure exactly when it will come up for the vote, but it could come up at any point um following that so all right yeah so we're recording this on 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 tuesday march the 16th and so this will be released on the day that they're actually having a hearing early in the morning um all right well well i guess my final question to you is for the people listening you know how can concerned americans respond because here's the thing jared even if it gets voted down in the senate the issue is not going away. Attacks right. against freedom of speech, religious liberty, parental consent, childhood, and women's safety, all they're not going away. So what can the person listening do about all of this? Yeah, well, first off, I think 
you know, knowledge is, is really key. So you can go to heritage.org forward slash gender, um, or you can actually go to another initiative called um, the A Promise to America's Children at promise to America's children.org, which is all about um, promoting and uh, protecting children against um, kind of radical leftist, you know, ideology uh, that comes in the form of legislation, whether at the state or national level, um, listeners can get the resources they need to defend, you know, our constitutional freedoms from the Equality Act and other legislation like that uh, from those websites. Again, that's heritage.org forward slash gender and then promise to America's children.org. Um, and the only other thing I would say is that really it's just uh, those sites will be really good resources for um, listeners to keep their eye on and their ear on. Um, what's going on in Congress, because it's not, you're right, it's not just the Equality Act. There are other uh, legislation, uh, as we've seen, um, you know, the Violence to uh, Against Women Reauthorization Act. There's the Stronger Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act. The left is not, is not going to stop just because they can't get the Equality Act passed. Um, you know, they're, they're going to keep trying to put this ideology into law uh, from the federal level, no matter what. So, um, and last thing I'll say is you can also follow the Daily Signal on Twitter, um, which is Heritage's um, commentary uh, news source. So just to stay up to date on what's happening with the Equality Act and, and other legislation. Yeah. And I'd, I'd also add to speak up before you know it's too late because they're trying to make it a crime to, to have a different viewpoint. And so just to speak up before you know it is made a crime – um, and like you said, knowledge knowledge is power. Jared, we'll include all that um, in the show notes. So if, if you're listening to this episode, just check out the show notes to um, get uh, get the links to all that. But thank you so much, Jared, for coming on the show. Yeah. And thank you so much for listening. Please uh, share this episode because um, people really need to know what's happening in D.C., especially uh, with regards to the Equality Act. So thank you so much for listening.